<clears throat> Good evening, Rolling Meadows. This is the March 12th, 2019 City Council meeting beginning at 7.30. This evening's Pledge of Allegiance will be led by the Cub Scouts from Troop 168. If they'd like to come forward, please. Please, please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, fellas. Will the clerk please call the roll? Cannon. Here. Majikas. Here. Gallo. Here. Banger. Here. Diestas. Present. Williams. Here. Six present and one is absent. The first order of business is to approve the minutes from the February 12th, 2019 and February 26th, 2019 City Council meetings. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? Mr. Banger has made that. Mr. Williams has seconded. Are there any corrections, deletions, or uh, additions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? The minutes have been passed. Uh, this brings us to the mayor's report. Um, it has been a busy time again in Meadows. For those of you that were around for uh, Dr. Seuss, at the library, uh, for those of us, I believe, it was Ms. Majikas, Ms. Banger, Mr. Gallo was there. We uh, a good time. I think they had about 600 people that attended that. And then later on that night, we had the Taste of the Town, where I believe, uh, let's see, Mr. Banger always seems to get Portello's hot dogs. <laughs> We're not sure why. Uh, Ms. Majikas, <laughs> thank you for the beverages. I got to be MC, MC and do a little bit of... Uh, uh, the uh, Pita Pita, and we did have Alderman Gallo, uh, Diestis, Cannon, I believe it was Ad, Mr. Mr. Rob, I'm sorry, and you also were in attendance, so I thank you, and the city thanks you. I need to uh, move on to something not as much fun. Uh, when you're the mayor up here and people address the city council, they are to address the city council through the mayor, and it is not to be a time where people are attacked or people are uh, from staff or city. So I apologize that that happened at the last meeting and that in the future, the uh, rules and ordinances governing how people speak to the council had been minimized, so tonight you will be seeing that we're going to clarify those and go back to the original ordinance, reading it in full detail. So again, I apologize for that evening. Are there ward reports? One. Yes, Mr. Ms. Pajikas, thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to, uh, I had a call from a resident, I spoke with Mr. Vote about it already, um, but any other residents that live on Fremont that might back up to Euclid where they're doing the bike path, um, I had a resident questioning about future landscaping on that, and once the bike path is getting closer to completion, May, June, whatever, um, we'll have a better idea of what landscaping will be done uh, by the fencing, the properties in there, because uh, they were concerned about losing some of their privacy. So I just want anybody that might have a question about it, that it, it is known, 
and uh, Public Works and Mr. Vote and everything, uh, the discussions are being had and we'll have more information as it gets further along. Thank you. Any other ward reports? Uh, seeing none, this brings. Sorry, uh, Mr. Diaz. I you. apologize. That's okay. Um, in our last city council meeting, a resident spoke and told some untruths about me. I have never spoken in a manner that could be considered rude or insulting. I will not try to defend myself against politically motivated statements. There was a statement by a Rolling Meadows police officer who witnessed the event. His statement is the truth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diestas. Any other? This brings us to the part of the meeting where uh, residents sign in. As I, as I stated earlier, it'll be a little longer clarification from the last time that we've done it. In order to secure the rights of the citizens of the city to fair and just representation, before their elected officials and to guarantee to the elected officials an order and dignified form in which to conduct city's businesses, no person shall be allowed to engage in any activity that will disrupt, excuse me, disturb, disturb or disrupt the orderly proceedings of a city council. In order to maintain this objective, the following rules of conduct are hereby established. Any person who seeks to address the city council at this time for public comment shall be permitted to speak only upon the recognition of the presiding officer. And such person shall adhere to the following provisions. Each person addressing the city council shall state their name and address for the record. Each person shall be granted no more than five minutes of the allotted 20 minutes in order to address the city council. Questions and or commentary shall be limited to city business. Comments supporting or opposing a nominated person's candidacy for elective office of the city shall be out of order. Commentary shall be directed to the presiding officer unless the presiding officer permits an individual to address other city officers present. Discussion shall take place in a professional manner which displays mutual respect. Profanity shall not be used in any form or manner. The first signatory tonight is Bob Stapleton. Please come forward, sir. And would you please state your name and your address for the record? My name is Robert Stapleton. I'm president of National Wireless Ventures. My address is 505 North Lakeshore Drive, Chicago, Illinois, uh, Suite 2109. I'm here just to make myself available to the village. Um, I've kind of had a long-standing relationship with the village in one way or the other. Uh, prior to my present life, I was the governmental affairs representative for 3M. And um, one may say it was a good thing or a bad thing, but I was involved in the, the construction of the first billboards in, Will, in uh, Rolling Meadows here along 53 on Don Nusis's property and A&H Entertainment, things like that. But what I'm here tonight for is to let you know uh, what I do. Um, I work with both municipalities and I work with um, the wireless carriers in our industry. And the, my clients have expressed a great deal of interest in the two new fire stations you're building. We'd we would like to build a tower that would be available for the wireless carriers and for the village to use. And in turn, we would pay revenue to the village uh, for that. And in turn, basically on, on our initial projections, this would generate approximately $2.6 million to the village over the term of the agreement. May generate additional dollars more, um, but would allow for the carriers to erect their equipment here in the village. It would allow for the placement of um, FirstNet equipment. And uh, I don't know how familiar you are with FirstNet. FirstNet is a program that was put together by the federal government, awarded to AT&T for the purpose of interoperational communication between your police department, your fire department, your public works, and the federal agencies so they could all speak on one frequency. Um, it's a major program going on, and it all comes out of from 9-11. But basically, um, I do this all over the, the state and all over the Midwest. Um, we have worked with the city of Gurney in, in the erection of towers on their property and their fire station. Uh, we've worked with the village of Westchester, and in fact, we're in the midst of purchasing their tower from them. We've worked with several fire protection districts in either acquiring or placing assets 
on their on their uh, property, and it ends up to being no cost to the community, and at the same time allows for the placement of your microwave networks, uh, your public service networks, your repeaters, for instance, you know, to the county and things like that. But um, I just I brought it along with me tonight, if you would like. I just brought out a, a basically an income projection that the, that the village would would receive for the uh, for the, both of the two fire stations. Well, thank you, and the city of Rolling Meadows appreciates you coming tonight. Thank, thank you. you. Would we okay if I pass this out? Yeah. Each member, though, that's up to that's up. If you would like to pass it out to Mr. Volt right there. Okay, okay. sure. Thank, thank you. you. And he'll make sure we get copies of it. Thank you. Thank you. The next signatory is Steve Rabarczyk. Good evening, Mr. Rabarczyk. If you'd give us your name and address, please. Sure. Uh, Steve Rebarchek, uh 3000 Owl Drive, Rolling Meadows. Um, I've come here tonight to, to uh, talk to you about some accusations that were made uh, against uh, Alderman Diaz this um, February 26th uh, about an item question of sub September 11th, uh, 2018. Uh, I happen to be at that council meeting. Um, I also happen to be in a parking lot after that council meeting. I was talking to a friend. Um, Mr. Diaz, this came out. Um, we said, hello, whatever. Uh, I was still talking to the friend. As he was walking to his car, a uh, group of people uh, started questioning him. He clearly did not want to, sp to speak to them. He said, I don't, uh, I have nothing to say to you. That was all I heard him say. Uh, he got into his car and took off. Uh, they kept after him all the way up to his car, even though he said he, did, he had nothing to say to them. Uh, in my opinion, um, the group was the aggressor, not Mr. Diastas. Uh, there was also a, a police officer <clears throat> in the parking lot, excuse me, who I managed to uh, obtain a uh, statement from him that I would like to read into the record. Um, this is uh, addressed to the chief um, uh, on February 27th. It says, Sir, <clears throat> on the evening of September 11th, 2018, I was asked to provide security in the parking lot of City Hall after a boisterous city council meeting. I was positioned along the south side of the building just east of the front door facing westbound with my driver's side window in the down position. While seated in my patrol car, or my, while, proceeded, while seated in my patrol vehicle, I observed a crowd of a, about four to eight people gathered in the center of the parking lot, standing around after the meeting. I noticed that as Alderman Diastas exited City Hall and walked towards his vehicle, <clears throat> this group became rather vocal in the direction of Mr. Diastas. The group became so loud that Mr. Diastas raised his briefcase and attempted to deflect their attention. As Mr. Diastas entered his vehicle, I exited my patrol vehicle to ensure the safety of all persons in the parking lot. After Alderman Diastas entered his vehicle and drove eastbound through the through the lot past where I was standing, he rolled down his driver's side window. I asked if he was okay or if he needed assistance, to which he said no. He then left the area without incidents. Once Alderman Diasis left the parking lot, the group also dispersed without incidents. Re respectively submitted, Officer S. Whetstone, badge number 209. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barczyk. The council moves to its first order of business. The consent ordinance is in for the second reading. Or, uh, ordinance number 19-21, approve the amendment to the Meyer plan development for additional Tesla, Tesla supercharging stations, 1301 Meyer Drive. This ordinance, if adopted, would allow an amendment to the existing Meyer plan development to allow additional Tesla supercharging stations in the parking lot. The petitioner is requesting an additional 10 supercharging stations at this time, with the ability to have staff administratively approve additional expansions 
expansion in the future should it be requested by Tesla and Meyer. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? Ms. Majikis has made that. Has Second. it been seconded? Mr. Diastis has seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Diastis. Yes. Williams. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Majikis. Yes. Gallo. Yes. Bander. Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, this ordinance is approved. This brings us to ordinance B number 19-22 is to approve a program to charge mitigation rates for the deployment of emergency and non-emergency services by the Rolling Meadows Fire Department for, for services provided. This ordinance, if adopted, would allow the billing for specifically defined services, non-emergency, non-emergent and emergent at incidents excuse me, as incidents requiring typical and atypical services and equipment where the costs have typically been absorbed in the general operating budget of the department, specific charges will be consistent with the published revised mitigation chart. Is there, an, is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? Ms. Majikis has made that motion. Second. Sir, Ms. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Williams. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Majikis. Yes. Gallo. Yes. Banger. Yes. Diestas. Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, that ordinance is approved. The next item on the agenda is the consent ordinances for first reading. It consists of two items, C and D. Does any alderman wish to remove any item from the consent agenda for ordinances? Is there, has there, <clears throat> Excuse me. The question is, shall the, shall the two ordinances be moved forward for second reading? Do I have a motion? Mr. Banger has made that, and I have seconded. Ordinance number 19 authorized the reserving the city's 2019 home rule private activity bond volume cap. This ordinance, if adopted, would reserve the city's 2019 private activity volume cap so that there should be any future project the volume cap can be sold or transferred for a fee. D is the ordinance is amended 106-18A of the city code, parking prohibited in specific places, Metal Book Drive. This ordinance, if adopted, would establish addition parking restrictions in certain locations on certain public streets in the city, specifically on the south side of, the, of Lois Drive and on the west side of Meadow Brook Drive. These streets have already have no parking sign, signage posted on the north side and the east side of the streets, respectively, per ordinance 18-58. The inclusion of these street ordinances within the city code Traffic Section 106-18A will establish enforcement of traffic regulations and consistent, point, consistent posting of signs. Again, the question is, shall the two ordinances be moved forward for second reading? Will the clerk please call the roll? Cannon. Yes. Majikis. Yes. Gallo. Yes. Banger. Yes. Diestas. Yes. Williams. Yes. Six in favor, none opposed. They do move forward for second reading. The next item of business is a motion to approve the warrant from March 12th, 2019, as presented by the Finance Department. Is there a motion to approve the warrants? Mr. Williams has made that, and Mr. Banger has seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Majikis. Yes. Gallo. Yes. Banger. Yes. Diestas. Yes. Williams. Yes. Cannon. Yes. With six in favor and unopposed, the warrant is approved. This brings us to consent resolutions. The next item are the consent resolutions. It consists of 10 items, F through O. Does any alderman wish to remove any items from the consent agenda for resolutions? Mr. Cannon. I have a couple questions about O. Any other, uh, any other items? The chair declares it, excuse me. The chair declares it in order for one motion to consider all nine resolutions without debate. Is there a motion? Mr. Banger has made that motion. Ms. Majikis has seconded. it. Mm -hmm. 
Resolution number 19-R-26 is to adapt the 2019 zoning map. This resolution, if adopted, would approve the 2019 zoning map. The map must be updated once each year. Since the adoption of the zoning map, no map changes have been made. Therefore, the map itself is the only change is only being changed to reflect the date and the updated list of elected officials. G, resolution number 19-R-27 is to award a contract for the 2019 street resurfacing program. This resolution, if adopted, would award a contract for the proposed 2019 street program. Approved budget for 20, fiscal year 2019 is $1,100,000. Construction approximately $1,000,000 and engineering services approximately $100,000. H, resolution number 19-R-28 is to award a contract for a 2019 street resurfacing program, construction, construction engineering services. This resolution, if adopted, would award a contract for civil engineering services for the necessary construction observation for the 2019 street resurfacing program. The fiscal year 2019 budget provides for $100,000 for civil engineering services for the 2019 street resurfacing program at approximately 10% of the total amount budgeted for the local street resurfacing. These funds are to be utilized for the construction observation of the current year and for design engineering of the following year's program, typically September. Resolution number 19-29 is to authorize a contract for the purchase of three police pursuit cars. This resolution, if adopted, would authorize the purchase of three replacement vehicles which will be utilized for the police department patrol. These vehicles have been reviewed and supported for replacement by the Vehicle Replacement Committee. These vehicles serve the police department as frontline patrol vehicles. J, resolution number 19-R-30 is to authorize a contract for the purchase of one fire department administrative vehicle. This resolution, if adopted, would authorize the purchase of one replacement vehicle which will be utilized for fire department administration. This vehicle has been reviewed and supported for replacement by the Vehicle Replacement Committee. The vehicle serves the fire department as an administrative vehicle for training. K, resolution number 19-R-31 is to authorize the purchase and installation of a community sign at 2550 Quentin Road. This resolution, if adopted, would authorize the purchase and installation of two sided electronic message center to be installed on the Joint Action Water Agency Chawa site located at 2550 Quentin Road. L, resolution number 19-R-32 is to award a contract for the purchase of 4th of July fireworks. This resolution, if adopted, would authorize the execution of a contract with Mad Bomber Fireworks Productions for providing the 2019 City of Rolling Meadows 4th of July fireworks display. M, resolution number 19-R-33 is to authorize the execution of the Northwest Community Health Care Provider Paramedic Field Training Services Agreement. This resolution, if adopted, would authorize a NCH student to accompany the city's paramedics in ambulances. The city's department provides oversight and review to Northwest Community Hospital paramedic student training. The field training portion of approved curriculum. The student must have 308 hours of field time that is executed under the direct supervision of an approved paramedic uh, preceptor. N, resolution number 19-R-34 is to authorize the ordering of snow ice control salt for 2019 and 2020 winter season. This resolution, if adopted, would authorize the ordering of snow ice control salt for the winter season of 2019-2020. The city has, for the past 19 years, purchased its street salt in connection conjunction with the State of Illinois Joint Purchase Program. This has been an acceptable program in the delivery of salt to the city in the administration and guarantee of, of supply. Again, the question is, shall, this, shall these motions move forward? Do have the clerk call the roll, please? Majikas. Yes. Gallo. Yes. Banger. Yes. Diestas. Yes. Williams. Yes. Cannon. Yes. With six in favor, none opposed, the, those resolutions move forward. 
Uh, this brings us to resolution O, number 19-R-35 is awarded a contract for mechanical system replacement, HAVAC, on the public works rooftop. This resolution, if adopted, would award a contract with Rice Mechanical Palatine, Illinois, to replace two rooftop HAVAC units that failed at the public works facility located at Burnick Street. These heaters serve the water operations, the facility offices, the lunchroom, and the IIT program. IT room, excuse me, do I have a motion? Move forward. Mr. Banger has made that motion. Ms. Majikas has seconded. Uh, Mr. Cannon, you asked this to be pulled. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just had a couple quick questions, and uh, I'm not, I'm, for the, I'm fine with getting these replaced. I guess the question I would ask, in light of the fact that these units are 20 plus years old and we have 20 units there, is it possible that we could do this in a more efficient manner, that we have 20 different compressors? in one location? I, I don't think that whole facility is air-conditioned, is it? Mr. No, it's not. Mr. Bull. So, no. I mean, so why is, it is I, I'm not being critical, but why are there so many different units there? Can't we consolidate some of them to get a little bit more efficiency? I mean, they are 20 some years old. I think when we redid our, our system here, I think we made it consolidated quite a bit. We certainly could look at that, Alderman Cannon. We likely will look at that as we move forward into 2019 and evaluate the, the other compressors and the various um, HVAC equipment that's in the building. But it is a very scattered, because of the fact that some areas are air conditioned and some aren't, that's why we have so many units. Um, when the building was designed, whether it was good or bad design, um, that's the way it was. And uh, if there's a way to consolidate equipment to serve certain areas that have air conditioning versus areas that don't. We certainly will look at that um, later this year when we look for other um, units that need to be replaced this year. Uh, we expect that there will be several, but uh, at this point it's just these two, and um, we recommend proceeding with these two. You raise a good point, and we will do everything we can to evaluate that where there are efficiencies. Uh, come back with that. Great. Well, thanks for the consideration. I appreciate it. Any further questions? Will the clerk please call the roll? Gallo. Yes. Banger. Yes. Diestas. Yes. Williams. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Majikas. Yes. Six in favor, none opposed. That resolution moves forward. We have no appointments, no resolutions. City clerk has no report. This brings us to staff reports. Mr. Crumstock, items Thank of interest. Thank you very much, Mayor and City Council. Obviously, the first one you've already uh, mentioned, we want to thank all the readers who came for this year's annual Dr. Seuss celebration in the library. And obviously, um, Chief Nowacki read in the morning. And uh, we also had two representatives from the state of Illinois read in the afternoon. So we greatly appreciate everybody who comes out and uh, participates in the annual Dr. Seuss. Um, we hope next year more people will be wearing outfits and hats and other things that make it a little more festive. Um, we do want to thank everybody, as the mayor mentioned, uh, who volunteered and attended the March 2nd Taste the Town event. It was another great event. We hope to see everybody next year. Um, obviously, there were some new vendors, and obviously participation was about the same, a little bit lower, but at the same point in time, uh, it's another event that continues going, and I hope everybody liked uh, the dueling pianos by Howell to... Uh, that were out there at that night. Um, we do want to mention that early voting does start on Monday, March 18th. Um, so please check out Cook County website for voting locations. Obviously, Cook County Courthouse and Palatine has been in the past too. But again, it does start Monday, March 18th. Then um, before all of you at the uh, dais, and we want to remind people in the back of the room too, we do have the Community Event Foundation um, flyers for the fundraiser that will happen tomorrow, Wednesday, March 13th at Rep's Place, located at 3200 Kirchhoff Road. It goes from 11 a.m. to midnight, and you do need to present a flyer. It can be the printed one or if you have it on a smartphone, any way that shows that it's going back into. And we do appreciate Mike Reppy and the entire Rep's Place uh, for doing this for the foundation. It is a, fun, a fundraiser that goes straight to the foundation that supports city events. Obviously, the city of Rolling Meadows picks up a lot of it, and the foundation is picking up more of the items as we continue on. Then Thursday, March 21st, from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., the Rolling Meadows Library, there will be a meet, greet, and seat swap. 
for all gardeners who want to participate in the community garden. If you want any additional information, there's an alderman who would be more than happy to um, tell you more. Um, he also might offer you some honey um, at a discounted rate because the new stuff should be coming in a few months. Um, but we also want to make sure that people know that just a friendly reminder that yard waste collection starts on Monday, April 1st. Not fooling, really. It does start that way. In addition, please remember um, that also means the end of early refuse start. So um, this is per the ordinance that we have in place, but from November 1st to March 31st is the only time that you really have early refuse set out. But as I mentioned before, Beginning Monday, April 1st, residents should place refuse and recycling at the curb after 6 p.m. the night before scheduled pickup. For more information, please contact Public Works um, at 847-963-0500 or visit our website at <laughs> www.cityrm.org slash publicworks. And then obviously what I mentioned the last uh, month, and we'll have one more opportunity to remind folks this is a friendly reminder for all candidates and supporters about placing signs in the parkway. Per Rolling Meadows Code Section 122-22, signs, political campaign signs, signs or posters announcing candidates seeking public political office and or political <laughs> issues and data pertaining thereto up to an area of 12 square feet, um, signs will be displayed for no more than 60 days, signs shall be removed within 48 hours after an election, and political signs shall not be permitted on public property. And that is items of interest for this meeting. I do have one comment under items of interest that uh, Chief Nowacki uh, did, did win the award at the, at the library. We read green eggs and ham every year, and someone gets the seat where they get the whole page and a half where they have to read green eggs and ham. Congratulations, it was your lucky day you sat in the right spot, so. <laughs> yes. And you knew more about green eggs and ham than you ever cared about afterwards, so. Uh, committee, the whole agenda, Mr. Crumstock? Obviously right now we have five items that we're going to be discussing for the March 19th uh, meeting. Um, we'll have the National Government Finance Award for a 2013 audit. They'll be out here to do a presentation. Taylor Morrison will be here for their presentation. Obviously, if he missed the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, this is another um, opportunity for the public to hear about it and obviously hear from Taylor Morrison individuals. We will have another discussion on term limits for Alderman, Alderman Banger. Um, we'll be doing that presentation. He did that back in 2012. Um, and then dwelling units license program ad hoc committee, there's discussion on that and also going over some of the history of the city's program and then city bridge inspection procedures will be going over the bridges that the city actually owns and how we do those inspections but right now we have five items for the committee of the whole thank you mr crumstack are there matters not on the agenda mr banger thank you um i also had a response for for the february 26 meetings uh <clears throat> mostly in regard to miss bud matt's comments uh I, first off, let me say I, I welcome criticism of council matters, council matters, uh, but not personal attacks. And, uh, you know, when she stated that I don't care about the consequences of my votes, uh, I think that was uncalled for. Uh, her indirect uh, attack on members of this council not voting with integrity and conscious, and later her comment regarding members of this council voting for selfish uh, political personal gain, I thought that was also inappropriate. And uh, finally, another indirect attack on those members who she claims have their votes manipulated by the city manager, or in my case, play along with him. Uh, I thought that was out of line. And now I'm speaking for myself. I just wanted to be clear. I missed one meeting in eight years of my city council uh, uh, term. Uh, I spend hours preparing for these council meetings. I read hundreds of pages of uh, reports and agenda items each week. Uh, I ask questions just to be prepared. Uh, so I'm ready to make what I consider to be the right decision on each vote in front of me. I've spent hours at these council meetings. I've spent hours in closed sessions over these past eight years. Uh, to say shame on me and question my integrity and independence, I find that to be highly offensive which is fine. 
Uh, I can hold my head up high and be proud of the service I've rendered to the residents over these past eight years. Uh, I will say, I worry that Ms. Budmatz's personal attacks have the potential to discourage potential candidates from running for office for fear of similar uh, attacks. Um, in addition, it may or may not be a coincidence that these attacks came a month before the elections, so I can sympathize with my colleagues if they don't feel compelled to respond to these attacks. Um, in the future, though, and uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you for commenting on this. I would ask that the chair keep members of the audience from veering off into these personal attacks on members of the council. Um, Ms. Budmatz mentioned uh, news of my pending move, which is uh, a bit premature, even though I've had several people wish me the best of luck on my farm. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, my second term ends in two months. Uh, as I stated in 2012, and we'll be discussing next week, I'm a big believer in term limits, and I think two terms uh, is sufficient for us. Uh, I'm looking forward to shifting gears in a few months, uh, making the community garden more successful. I'll be mingling around at the community at the city markets, uh, and I'll be trying to add more bees to backyards. So thank you. Uh, well said, Mr. Banger, and yes, I do agree with you. And once again, I keeping it on track is the responsibility of the chair. And again. I support term limits because I brought it up when I first came down, but I never got as far as you did before I was shot down. So are there any other matters on the agenda? Yes, Mr. Cannon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As you may recall, I was only at the first meeting in February. Unfortunately, I missed the second and third meetings. So the first meeting was on February 12th, and there was an incident that happened that night that I would like to address later on. But I did want to briefly talk about the last meeting of the month on February 26th. Um, I, uh, Mr. Mayor, I appreciate you finally standing up tonight and admitting that you didn't handle it probably as the same manner that you probably would like to have had. So I appreciate you uh, realizing that in the future, people can't attack us personally. Like Mr. Bander just said, I think a lot of people underestimate what we do spend on our personal time to do this job. And for people to question the time and effort we put in it is very insulting at times. Um, that said, um, I also would ask you, Mr. Mayor, you know, for years, so I'm on, I've been on the council almost eight years. For the first six years I was on the council, we, we always stayed close to running a council meet, or public comments to 20 minutes. I sat in my hotel room and watched the, um, the tape of the 26th meeting. The first part of that with all the comments was 37 minutes, besides 37 minutes of hate. And I just would ask you to probably uh, readjust your, your timing. You know, in the past when Mr. Rooney was sitting in that chair, he always told people if there was more than enough people, if there was more than four people, that they had all had a reduced amount of time that they could spend speaking. I would ask you to consider that in the future. And I guess the other thing is none of those people that were attacked were allowed to answer or bring perspective to the verbal attacks that night. And I thought it was a horrible display, to say the least. Secondly, I'd like to switch to the February 12th meeting, and specifically the closed session. Um, I'm going to ask for a vote tonight on closure for Mr. Gallo. All the aldermen and some, and almost all of the aldermen and some of the staff witnessed at least partially a hostile, profanity-laced verbal assault on one of our fellow aldermen by Alderman Gallo. Mr. Mayor, you saw all of it or most of it, and you have no comment on it. That is kind of shocking to me. A person in the private sector would have been immediately suspended or more likely fired for actions like this. It would, it would not be ignored or brushed aside. The verbal assault was unlike anything I have ever witnessed in my eight years here. Nothing even comes close. It is with that background, Mr. Mayor, that under the statute of our, in our code of ordinances, section 2-3, censure of aldermen, any alderman acting or appearing in a lewd and disgraceful manner or who, pro, who uses inappropriate, obscene or insulting language to or any member of the council or does not obey the order of the chair shall be on motion censured by the majority vote of the pre members present or expelled by two-thirds vote of all members then holding office. I'm not asking for this person to be expelled, even though this was a second offense for him, but I would like them to be um, censured. So, um, as with this background, uh, I wish to ask that the council vote tonight on a motion to censure the fourth ward alderman. I might add, Mr. Mayor, that since you witnessed all of this, most all of it, you should have been the one who actually brought this forward. It should not have been me. I only bring this forward to try to maintain some level of integrity and decorum for the whole council. And finally, I know some people will see this and accuse this of being a political statement. It has nothing to do with politics. 
This is a personal conduct that should not be tolerated by anybody. Again, in the private sector, a person would probably be separated from his job from all the experiences I've had for the conduct like this. So thank you. I have a few comments, Mr. Cannon. First off, this, uh, pardon me? Do we have a second? Do we have a second for Mr. Cannon? Yes, second. Um, I will open up for the discussion, Mr. Cannon, is that Yes, I did witness it, and actions were taken, and a procedure was started the next day, and there was, the procedures were being followed, and I was advised by staff and legal counsel that let that procedures go forward before uh, any comments were made. So I just want you to know that it was not ignored, it was not brushed under the rug, and anyone who sits in this chair, as Alderman, I mean, as Mayor Rooney used to say, it's always good to signal your intentions. It would have been nice for you to at least give me a phone call or heads up out of courtesy tonight instead of springing this on us tonight without any word, any, any, yeah, obviously you've thought this out very thoroughly and you've thought this out a great deal. However, a common courtesy would have been to acknowledge to the chair or staff or someone else on the council. I don't know who else you brought Well, Mr. Mayor, I guess I would just say in sure. response to that is you could, have, you could have also said at the beginning of the meeting tonight that you were still looking into it. You didn't say a word about this that I'm aware of. You're correct, I did not. So, yes. We have a second, we have a discussion. Can, yes. Mr. can you explain, or can someone explain exactly what this, what this is and what this means? So, I'm going to, uh, Mr. Uh, since this is the first time that I've ever heard it coming forward, it'll take us a few minutes to sort it out. Okay. Again, if we'd had some information ahead of time, it would have helped. I'll go to my parliamentarian. Oh, we got, <clears throat> excuse me. We got, we've got a motion. we got a second. Yes. I don't know if there's any further discussion, and then just call the roll. We'll call the roll on your censure. So, okay. does any other discussion? What, 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 what does this mean? What is a, a censor? Well, you're, you're asking for censor of Mr. Gallo tonight, correct? That's correct. In my understanding, if you get two of them, that we are expelled from the council. It's my understanding. I'm not sure I'm right. That's my understanding. I don't, I don't believe that that's correct. Okay, no. I'm wrong on that then. I'm sorry. I'm just, I know that's my, not my understanding Great. of it. Thank you. What does it mean? What is it? Is just it? A, you're censured. That's it. That's all it is. You're... That's the end of it. That's it. You're, you're, it's, a, it's a discipline. So discipline. Yes. Okay. Further discussion? Well, the clerk, please call the roll. Banger. Yes. Diestas. Yes. Williams. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Majikas. Yes. Yes. And Gallo? No. That's 5-4 uh, and 1 opposed. The motion to censor Mr. Gallo goes forward. Any other matters not on the agenda? Is there a motion to adjourn? Mr. Banger has made that. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're done.